Mira, I saw what? Over it's running. He should be the boy. 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 He should be Now, can you tell me, is it going to be facing the same direction or is it how can we move a 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 move
Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start. Can we please rise for the academic procession? By the power vested in me, I hereby constitute this assembly as a legal congregation of the Safaku Mahatu Health Sciences University. going to ask that we all be seated. As we do the opening of the program, I wish to observe all protocol and also in a special way greet everyone and particularly the family, friends and colleagues and the community of Sefago Makhat to Health Sciences University together with the management. For our opening, 
this afternoon i'm reading from the book of first somewhere same scripture we read from during the inauguration of the late dr etna mulewa and i thought we could recap on that same scripture and find some lessons and it reads as follows jesse had seven of his sons pass before somewhere but samuel said to him the lord has not chosen this so he asked the jesse are this all the sons you have there is still yet the youngest the jesse answered he is tending the sheep someone said send for him we will not sit down until he arrives so he sent for him and had him brought in he was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features but here's the caption that i want us to focus on the lord said rise up and anoint him for this is the one everybody say this is the one there are 56 billion people and almost 7.6 billion people around the world uh, 56 in south africa it could have been any other person doing what you are doing at the moment and occupying that particular seat where you are but god chose you to be the one simply because this is the one it could have been someone else uh, registered in your place in the university but god chose you for this is the one it could have been someone else occupying your office but god chose you son of the soil for this is the one when god has chosen someone he has chosen them and no one can change it we have the two dvcs in our university god chose them we have the vc god chose him for this is the one and certainly we had a chancellor in the person of dr edna mulewa whose task was just for a little while and i have learned right from there that the life of someone living god's purpose is not necessarily limited to the duration but the contribution that they have to make and dr edna Mulewa, without a shadow of a doubt was a woman of purpose and i want to share four qualities of a woman of purpose and i will close this a woman of purpose understands that she has been anointed already and does not need any man's approval or recognition she does she does what she likes and likes what she does woman of purpose who is right here in the hall do not live your life on the approval of others that is too limiting the second quality is that a woman of purpose like dr edna Mulewa, understands that she has been anointed for greatness despised despite her shortcomings and background she will do all in her power to get what she wants nothing can limit her the third one a woman of purpose does not compete but complement others with her anointing because she's not in fear of losing what she already has she has it it belongs to her woman of purpose stop competing and start complimenting those who are close to you the last one a woman of purpose understands that she has been anointed for greatness and nothing shall prevent her from becoming the best that god has destined her to be and as i sit down to the family we just want to uh, pass our sincere and heartfelt condolences to all of you we may not understand how you feel at the at this point in time but we want to say to you god understands and god cares first corinthians my last text chapter 15 verse 51 going down what says behold i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet of the lord will sound and the dead in christ will be raised incorruptible 
and we shall be changed. For this is what the Lord has promised. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. One of these days, God shall see us through and he shall empower us and he shall deal with the death that's taking our loved ones away. May God bless us and keep us safe and comfort us and strengthen us. I wish to ask you to bow down your head as we pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the time that you have spent for us in this hour, that as we begin the program, you have brought us all from all walks of life, the community of Sefago Makato Health Sciences University and the leadership thereof, the students are here, the staff members are here, and we also have the friends of SMU coming from other parts of uh, South Africa, and they are all here to remember and also celebrate a life well lived. And we pray, Father, that all of us who are here may find a blessing, that we may be rich in our souls as a result of participating in this ceremony. We pray that you may forgive us and cleanse us with your blood, cover us with your hand, and strengthen us. And above all, Father, strengthen our faith through this difficult time. We are praying for the family, Father, that as they continue to mourn the loss of their mother, their aunt, their sister, uh, may you continue to comfort them, Father, with a true comfort from above. May your spirit fall afresh upon them, Father, so that they feel your warmth and your presence. May you bless the program and the proceedings and everyone taking part in this program. Thank you so much for everything and your promises that you have made to all of us. Thank you for the word that you have shared with us. Strengthen us with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'm not going to be making much of a remark, but to actually welcome our guests on this very difficult occasion. Um, but yet, acknowledge that um, we celebrate the life of Dr. Edna Molewa. I'd like to welcome the MEC for Health, Dr. Gwen Ramakopa, also fellow chancellor, uh, the CEO doc of Dr. George Mukari Hospital, Dr. Kongwana, 
the family of the late Dr. Moleon, senior management from the Department of Environmental Affairs, council members of Safak Makach Health Sciences University, members of SMU management, the Senate members here, members of Institutional Forum of SMU, the deans of school or alumni, staff members and students. I'll leave the much of the uh, remark and address to the vice chancellor. But suffice to say, uh, personally uh, met Dr. Edna Mulewa about 20 years ago as a very young man in the little town of Nelstrom when she came to visit friends um, and fa visit families. And I didn't see her close until last year when she was inaugurated as the chancellor and I was the deputy vice chancellor of the university. It was a reflection personally of time and she indeed stood the test of time in various roles she's played in South Africa. I would definitely miss her sitting next to her in that chair. Just last time I met her was on my birthday on the 11th of May when we had the last graduation. So for me it was personally touching and unbelievable when I heard her passing. But I've come to accept that we're all here on a journey and some time is what we make of the trip that matters. So on that note, um, I would like to then invite the Vice Chancellor to address you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. May I declare all protocol observed in the interest of time. We are gathered here this afternoon for the memorial service of the late Dr. Edna Mulewa, among other the Minister of Environmental Affairs and the Chancellor of Safaku Mahatu Health Sciences University. The SMU is saddened by the news of the passing away of Dr. Mulewa during the morning of 22 September 2018. National and international media referred to the late Dr. Molewa in many contexts. For example, a climate change champion a champion 
of the fight for the recognition of workers' rights. A loving, intelligent African woman of the soil. A person fighting for the equality of women who vehemently opposed the economic and sexual exploitation of women and violence against women and children. A person advancing the country's agenda of fundamental social transformation. A person who grasped incredibly difficult concepts with ease. Somebody you couldn't bamboozle even when you thought she was not listening. A gallant fighter for our freedom. And many more. For me, personally, our Chancellor's life and achievements confirm the following truth. You give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. as was said by Gibran. But ladies and gentlemen, the SMU community experiences the loss of the passing away of Dr. Mulewa in a special way. The SMU was established on 16 May 2014 as one of three new post-apartheid universities in South Africa with a particular focus on health sciences education. The late Dr. Mulewa was inaugurated on gentlemen, Dr. Mulewa fully and unconditionally embraced the vision and mission of the institution and contributed immensely during her short term of office to the stabilization and development of the SMU. Despite the multiple responsibilities associated with her role in government and beyond, her calling to serve the SMU as Chancellor always found a special place. The SMU owes a great debt of appreciation to our Chancellor for representing the institution with passion and distinction, for introducing the SMU as a fledgling institution to important national and international networks, and for restoring institutional self-confidence as an academic institution capable of achieving the highest recognition. Ladies and gentlemen, I quickly learned from our Chancellor. 
the following. That there is no substitute for rolling up your sleeves and working with the people who can make a difference. With the nation, the SMU mourns the passing of Dr. Molewa. And herewith conveys its deepest condolences to her family and friends. We concur with the President of South Africa that her passing is a devastating loss to our nation and to the global community. The SMU honors her for her contributions and pioneering leadership in numerous spheres. Ladies and gentlemen, SMU has lost a mother, a friend, a mentor, a passionate supporter and institutional leader. But ladies and gentlemen, we have also lost our beautiful princess. Allow me then, in conclusion, to say goodbye to our princess in the words of the song adapted and sang by Elton John in 1997 at the memorial service of another princess. I've adapted this for purposes of this service. Goodbye, SMU's Rose. May you ever grow in our hearts. You were the grace that placed itself where lives were torn apart. You called out to our country and you whispered to those in pain, now you belong to heaven and the stars spell out your name and your footsteps will always fall here along South Africa's greenest hills. Loveliness we've lost. These empty days without your smile, this torch we'll always carry for our nation's golden child. And even though we try, the truth brings us to tears. All our words cannot express the joy you brought us through the years. It seems to us you lived your life like a candle in the wind, never fading with the sunset or when the rain set in. Your candle burnt out long before your legend never will. May the soul of our beloved Chancellor rest in eternal peace. Thank you.
Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Indeed, the university has lost a mother and she will be greatly missed. Without wasting time, I would like to call the M SMU Council representative, Mr. Tim Mudise. Okay, uh, sorry about that. I think uh, it's uh, Dr. Amalka. The family of uh, our late minister and chancellor, uh, Master of Progress, the vice chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, all present. Uh, I've played many roles in my life, but no matter how hard I try, my voice cannot mimic that of Tim Mudise. Um, let me say that uh, on behalf of council uh, that we, we were greatly shocked and still are at the loss of our chancellor. Totally unexpected. So I will read to you the statement from council itself and master of ceremonies, I will indulge and speak on two other points, if you allow me. Let me start off by conveying on behalf of our council, our heartfelt condolences to the Muliwa family. As council, we are indeed saddened by the sudden loss of an important pillar of our newly established university, SMU. Dr. Moliwa is the first chancellor of this newly created university. She immediately took her responsibilities very seriously as a chancellor and was able to perform her roles with distinction including during the graduation ceremonies. Her appointment to serve in this important position as a titular head was not only a victory against patriarchy and all forms of discrimination, but also an important statement that diligence, hard work, and perseverance pay. In spite of her already busy schedule, Dr. Moliwa made time for the university activities and took keen interest in matters related to the development of the university. She showed an amazing courage and forged and created networks and key strategic alliances with a view to advancing the collective interests of the university. Above all, Dr. Moliwa was a gentle soul and giant. Even though her untimely death is a loss for South Africa and the developing world as a whole, it is also a loss for our newly established university. As we march closer to the fifth anniversary of our establishment in 2019, we remain saddened that you will not be there to mark this important milestone with us. We are however comforted by the realization that she lived her life to the fullest. To the family, we say, you are not alone in your loss. To our beloved Chancellor, we would like to thank you for your immense contribution to the building and reimagining of the university. We promise to build on the legacy you left. May your light continue to shine at this university. Anybody who, who knew our vice chancellor well will know that she was also a very religious person. And I would like to take this opportunity just to read a statement from uh, 
another council member to say that to the family that we are aware that no one travels life without at some point experiencing the loss of someone dear. The loss of a loved one through that is one of life's most intense challenges and the pain can be overwhelming. Please find comfort and strength with this, his arms of love and comfort around those who trust in him. He heals the broken heart and binds up the wounds. Lean on God and allow him to continue the process of healing you. The third part, which I requested indulgence for, is for me to speak to my comrades 10% of the cadres on the ground. But she was an exceptionally brave cadre, known to us, participated in activities, risked her life, did everything and was exceptionally disciplined. In her later career, you know that she was head of the African National Congress Disciplinary Committee. Those qualities she demonstrated at a very young age. In those days, we buried a lot of our comrades and we remember her singing. And I hope the choir will give us a rousing song at some point in time. Because death in those days was not a loss. It was a victory. It was a celebration. It was a life volunteered freely given, and the price that needed to be paid then was accepted by all. This is how I know my late comrade. I remember when she turned up at the tragic loss of one of her closest comrades, the late Deputy Minister Paul Sefularo. She was totally overcome and we helped her through it. And I remember her kind words to all of us who shared the grief at that point in time. You know, she was a giant. We should never forget that. But a giant who never forgot where she came from, all the values that she espoused throughout her life. Unfortunately, nowadays, we do have some with that sort of history who have adopted other values. But my comrade, Edna Oliwa, lived those values to the very end. So we should celebrate her life. We should celebrate her sacrifice. We should celebrate her selfless service to a people from day one to the day that she was taken from us. The family of Mulevo, the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, the community of SNU, cabinet ministers, senior government officials, all protocol observed. It is with greatness that we have learned of the passing away of Chancellor Edna Mulewa. More so that her passing caught us all by surprise. The world mourns with us and celebrates the extraordinary life of this remarkable woman who devoted her life to the country and to the African continent. We at SMU are still trying to come to terms with this sad news, and we are devastated by her passing. Chancellor Molewa was a strong woman. Her language informed us that she was always very focused and determined. She was full of life. She was instrumental in transforming the minds of the executive management in SMU in terms of gender representation, and she always raised the 
gender issues in all discourses. Her death has left a gaping hole among the ranks of women leaders, but she leaves behind a solid foundation for others to build on. The death of Chancellor Maloma means we are all deprived. We have lost an activist, a gallant fighter for our freedom as women, and an extraordinary person who showed the skills of leadership and great motherly touch during those times. She was the first of many things in portfolios. She was the first female chairperson of the Portfolio Committee of Trade and Industry. She was part of the organizing and negotiating team during the Africa's first hosting of the 2002 World Summit on Sustainable Development. In 2004, she became the first woman premier of the Northwest province. She was the first woman to be elected as the provincial chairperson of the ANC in the, northern, in the Northwest province. And in 2017, she was installed as the first chancellor of the Sfarko Machado Health Science University, the first institution of its kind in post-apartheid South Africa, the first woman for that matter, and hopefully not the last. Her call to South, South, to South Africa to strategically support, to cooperate South Africa to strategically support SMU and deepen relationship that exist including establishing chairs of excellence, providing bursaries, internships, and job opportunities to students, convinced us as SMU that we did not make a mistake on asking her to strategically lead SMU. Chancellor Molewa envisioned a future for SMU with green spaces, parks, and open areas for students to live and study in. Her vision should not die with her. There is an adage that says, good men does, don't die, but death cannot kill their names. On behalf of the Senate, I'm asked to send our deepest condolences to, first, uh, to Chancellor Molawa's family, her children and her grandchildren. I'd like to say to you, no amount of words will take this pain away, and that tells me that it, I acknowledge the limitation of human beings for giving you such a comfort. God is your greatest comforter. To colleagues in government and the people of South Africa, your loss may be great, but our loss is even greater. We were yet to learn from this great human being. I can only comfort you by saying, a good man never stays in the grave forever. He always, he always has chances to come back and remember
Uh, I, I don't really have much to say because uh, I'm really devastated as uh, the student of uh, as Health Science University, the SRC uh, president, and the outgoing. We've uh, had a sort of successful uh, elections yesterday. I think the spirit of uh, Mamulewa was with us. Yeah, ne? When I became the uh, president of the SRC, I thought I was going to have speeches to a lot of beautiful and joyful events, go to a lot of joyful trips and so forth. But instead, I found myself speaking in uh, Moria of Memorial Services and traveling to funerals more than graduation parties. It's really bad in our institution. As uh, we, we are humbly requesting to Koko uh, and all the ancestors, whenever you are, may you please help uh, each other there to remove this heavy, dark cloud that is hovering around this institution. Our notice boards are frequently occupied by notices of memorial services more than those of academics, student life, or any other progressive programs. Surely people of Department of Marketing and Communication have that template saved on their desktop for quick access. Certainly, I stand here today saying probably my last speech as the SRC president celebrating the life of our mother as the SMU community, the first uh, SMU chancellor, Mama, Tokotela at Namuleo. A colorful life well lived and celebrated across the country and across the globe. Today we are poor in both quantity and quality as the SMU student community because unlike just expecting more, we knew we got more by just having had you as our mother and chancellor. Your servitude and your energy towards SMU was never in question. As I've told the family when we visited them last week. I said to them that Me at Namulewa, she was a mother to our community, more especially uh, to our female cadres. Whenever we had uh, programs of females, the first person that would come to their mind would be a Mamma Mulewa, even though at times she was not available. Politicians are mostly known for making it to cover pages of the newspapers and frequenting news bulletin for all sorts of bad news, but that has hardly been the case with you in every space where you led from your days as the premier of Bukoni Bupirima to your days uh, servitude in the national legislature. We envy those who spend so much time with you because the amount of wisdom they got through their interaction with you is a second to nine. I at least got the chance to steal a few pages from your book through the interaction I've had with you, Mama. And that played a huge role into shaping my time and leadership in the SRC will surely use the wisdom everywhere I'm required to spearhead uh, another battalion of uh, people. Uh, it's very sad. Uh, before our mother departed, we were supposed to meet on a weekend. Unfortunately, the time where we were supposed to meet her, we were made aware that she's not feeling well. 
because when I'm going to be a, a bit harsh, but people would have to forgive me. When our mother had that we were fighting uh, against corruption that was happening in SMU, she actually came to SMU, I remember, where I was just sitting next to her and then they were discussing about me. And then she, I think it was, she was with Dr. Poole and then she told her, are, hey, this skinny boy, are, hey, but never mind. By the way, dynamite comes with small packages. And uh, to those who know me, we have really fought hard. I, it's very sad that uh, post-apartheid, after 24 years, the SMU is still struggling, where we thought that when government is pumping a lot of money, it will grow, including Mamule were donating a lump sum of money to the university to ensure that it moves forward. It never happened. We were never even told about the money, where is it going? Because of greediness of certain individuals within the institution. The program have been, uh, the, the project have been placed uh, in place to make sure that we transform and move the institution forward, but the other people who are sitting on top of funds and ensuring that our university does not move forward. And I hope wherever you are, Mamulewa, your spirit will be with us and the Minister of Higher Education will be able to make sure that our project are fastened in honor of your memory and the legacy that you've left in SMU. The, the manner in which uh, we are treated in SMU is very bad, Mama. Wherever you are, please hear our prayers. Because whenever a black child is accused of something, they send her home. But when a white person is accused, they protect her. They even tell us about their, their legal rights. There is a living testimony behind it. I'm not just saying it. It's very painful. And it's very sad. Hopefully, things will change. Let me just stop there before I become emotional. Thank you, Mama, for having chosen SMU when SMU chose you. Thank you for what you have done. Despite uh, your short stay with us, the wisdom you have shared is timeless. We will continue to endeavor delivering on the vision you had. Thank you for chosen to South Africa when South Africa chose you. Rama Sedi Mudimwarena, please look at, look at us with a kind eye and spare from these dark clouds hovering around us. In fact, delete it permanently. We are here to attend more classes and clinicals than attending memorial services. We are here to celebrate the academic successes than attending more funerals. We are more complaining. We are humbly asking you to spare from the enemies. Our mother, Mama Tokotela at Namulewa, May your soul rest in power and internal peace. Ola lengot kolo, roba laka khoto yetela ikurula. May your soul rest in peace. Awe renga muraro, ralevo. Itambi lu, itambi lu wa mur le mushiele. Le moshi ele se ba o ta ti ba o ta ti ba o fe tu to te mo le mo mo le mo wa wa mo ka me de ka me. Oh, Tiba, Tiba, 
of the Mulewa family, MEC Dr. Ramokopa, Vice-Chancellor, members of council, members of senate and the institutional forum, fellow members of the SMU community and distinguished guests. As members of the institutional forum, we were shocked and deeply saddened when we received the news that our chancellor had passed on. The first memory at that moment that lit up my mind was the wonderful interview that she gave on SABC's Morning Live after her installation as our Chancellor. She was passionate about SMU. She beamed with excitement and pride as she spoke about this institution and its students. From the onset, it was clear that Minister Edna Mulewa had a focused drive and direction for this university. She wanted us to position SMU at the highest level worldwide. She was firm in her resolve to develop sustainable support mechanisms for infrastructure, for research capacitation, for technology and innovation, all geared and available to our students and the broader university community. She was unequivocal this university must be known. It must grow. Dr. Malewa's presence and stature as our chancellor have made a massive impact on the lives of those in the SMU community. But a sudden absence now leaves us with a gaping hole, which hurts us all. We will seek to find solace in her memory and the example that she set to us all is a flame that cannot be extinguished. I hope that we have and that we will continue to honor her legacy and her expectations of us at SMU. We are honored to be able to pay our last respect. To the dear family, on behalf of the Institutional Forum of SMU, please accept our heartfelt sympathies and condolences and know that you are in our thoughts and prayers. May you find peace and love in the memories that you cherish. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, choir. Yes, it is evident that we have lost the leader. We have lost the mentor. As all the speakers from the university did say, she was interested in many activities of the university. As a newly established Health Sciences University, we face or we still have challenges. And we thought she would be here longer to support all the programs. But it's unfortunate that we are faced with the situation. We believe that wherever she is, should look down on us and continue to support Safako Makatu Health Sciences University. I would like to call upon Mr. Meti, representative of the family. I greet you all on behalf of the family. Uh, today, on behalf of the family, we say goodbye to the eldest child of Nana and Michael Meti, a mother, a sister, a leader, an activist. And as, as Maya Angela says, a phenomenal woman. The, the world will long remember Dr. Dr. Bomo Eith Edna Molewa, affect, affectionately known in the family as his Edna, and the le legacy she leaves behind. A friend, a very close friend of mine once asked me, how does your sister survive and navigate the world of politics and leadership so seamlessly because it's tough out there? My answer to him, she's tough. She's a tough woman. She's intelligent and that she did not hide. She is a hard worker. She is a tactician and a strategist. But most of all, her humility and integrity are her biggest strengths. As much as it saddens us as a family to have lost Sis Edna, I'm sure she would want us to celebrate her life as this is what she would normally say when called upon to speak at family funerals or bereavements. I therefore invite all of you on behalf of the family to join us in celebrating this well-lived life by a poem from Maya Angelou and the title is phenomenal woman, and it reads as follows. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it is the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that is me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swan around me, a hive of honeybees, I say. It's the fire in my eyes and the flesh of my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. 
Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arc of my back, the sun of my smile, the right of my breasts, the grace of my style. I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That is me. Now you understand just why my head is not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk really loud. When you see me passing, I ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the clicks of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care, cause I am a woman, phenomenally, a phenomenal woman. That is me. On behalf of the family once again, we would like to thank everyone at SMU and the entire country for bestowing such great responsibility on one of us, Sisedna. I have no doubt that despite the little time that you spent with this university, you had already seen a glimpse of what she's capable of. It is unfortunate, it, it is unfortunate that Death has robbed us of this amazing stalwart. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meti. You know, I'm very thankful as the university to have shared the life of Dr. Etna Malewa. She was also a family to us. She was very close to students, as I said, to staff and all the SMU community. Without wasting time, I'd like to call the, honor, call the Honorable Dr. G.M. Ramokopa, the MEC of HAP. Thank you very much, uh, Program Directors. The family of uh, Meti and Mulewa, our vice chancellor of um, the Sefako Makhatu University, Professor De Beer, as well as members of uh, your executive, uh, including Senate, council members, uh, SRC um, and members and the students who are here, the representatives of the institutional forum as well as the alumni association of whom I'm a member, Pastor Maboye, dignitaries, friends, fellow South Africans. It is indeed a solemn moment for me to join you today, particularly the Mulewa um, family and the Meti family, the Sefako Makhatu Health Sciences University community, the ANC family, and the people of South Africa in mourning the passing on of a heroine and a renowned leader, Minister Dr. Bomo Edna Edith Molewa, the inaugural chancellor of this university. Though the pain of her passing on is born with heavy hearts, and teary eyes, we must count ourselves very privileged to have lived during her times and to have been touched by the passion that she had for her work and the tasks that she was given, as well as uh, being a selfless servant leader. Just a few months ago, I was here to congratulate her in her inauguration as a chancellor. And I committed to support her as a fellow chancellor and in particular as a chancellor of my alumni. 
typically and typical of her thoroughness and tenacity. I had to, in a few days thereafter, account for the commitments that I made and also to commit to the dates that I will deliver this on. She didn't spare any time. She got down to do her work and she focused on the areas that uh, she could deliver on as quickly as possible. And that was the at Namulewa that I knew. She reminded me that I said I was going to be the first to contribute to the university fund that she was going to establish, and I had to do exactly that. She reminded me that uh, I promised that I will help her to host a golf fundraising event for the university, especially to support students who are destitute and also deserving. I had to immediately phone the APSA Foundation, which helped me with uh, raising such funds at the Tuani University of Technology. And indeed, they had to commit to work with her. You could never say no to her. To you, Comrade Edna Mulewa, my sister, my comrade, I say, we must tell no lies and claim no easy victories. Taking from the words of America Cabral. You gave your youth and adulthood to matters of justice and equity in our world. As a cadre of the liberation movement under the leadership of the African National Congress, in the various roles that you, pray, you played, you fought for the freedom we enjoy today. As a trade unionist, you fought for the rights of workers when they had none. As a gender activist, you continued fight until, to, to fight until the last moment against the horrendous abuse of women and children and for equal opportunities, regardless of gender, for all our children. As a parliamentarian, you were diligent and respected worldwide by your peers for your exceptional attention to detail you were an astute diplomat, and I saw this when I shared with you. I was part of the delegation you led at one of the COP17, I think it was COP17, um, but also in many other instances. And above all, you were a true ambassador of our country, our beloved South Africa. As Premier and Minister of Social Development and later of a Minister of Environmental Affairs, we remember how you, you were as a tenacious leader tackling quite complex and long-standing uh, problems that are faced by our people, including your ability to bring such complex issues closer to our understanding as ordinary persons in the fields that you led. Who would have ever thought that ordinary people would understand what climate change really means to all of us, except through your leadership? Who would have ever thought that we would be able to look at uh, the Saving the Rhino campaign as part of our endeavors and necess necessary interventions to build a sustainable world that we must enjoy today and that we must leave for future generations to inherit. This month, 
as we celebrate your life. We also celebrate the fact that you led the country in a new terrain of opportunities in making sure that we understand that we have a, a wealth within the National Marines. As we celebrate the National Marine Week in the month, second month of October, and we bid farewell to you, we say to our people, understand what God has given us as our country, both in the land and in the seas. And let us work together to celebrate the memory of uh, this sister of ours, this leader, and this cadre and activist by focusing on working together to unlock this wealth that is there, the God-given wealth, so that we can together be able to survive these harsh economic times, but also to fight successfully the intractable poverty and unemployment that we face today. Dr. Edna Mulewa was very caring. She cared for the young and old. She cared for those who had and those who did not have. She never sent anyone away, even if she didn't know how would it be possible to help them. One of her staff members was telling us that she could not eat alone. Even if you have had something to eat, she would insist that you share with her whatever she was having as a meal. Recently, one of our comrades passed on in the same hospital that uh, Edna Mulewa also died at. I recall when the family was very destitute, the family was very traumatized, and they were by their, themselves. I knew that even if this was just one of the staff members, Edna Molewa will forget that she's a minister. Edna Molewa will forget that she's a member of the NEC of the African National Congress and the AINS Women's League. Edna Molewa will respond out of humanity and rush to the hospital. And indeed, she was there within just a few minutes. And not only on that occasion, but many other occasions, including at the funeral of uh, uh, this uh, staff member. I said, let us not tell lies, not claim easy victories. I listened attentively to the punishing schedule that Edna Molewa went through before she went to China, the last trip she could have taken before her death. She was busy with her cabinet work. She had to service her constituency in Northwest. She had to service all the communities in her area of responsibility, interact with the, those that are in the environmental conservation area. She even had to go to KZN to help the ANC KZN to reach consensus and uh, have a successful provincial conference. Even though she knew she had to take a trip to China, she had to first touch base in Kenya a day before she left for China. She indeed was a hard worker. She worked for you and me. She worked for our nations. She worked for South Africa. She spared no moment. She worked selflessly, without complaining, and we all wondered, where did she get this energy that she had? But we know it was her passion 
her passion for justice, her passion for equality, her passion that we leave this world for future generations to inherit as a sustainable world. I want to call all of us to celebrate this rich legacy of the daughter of our soil, the daughter of Africa, by supporting the new dispensation of hope that our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is leading. That we take time to study the stimulus package that he has un un unraveled, which aim to intercept this difficult global economic difficulties that we face. That we must contribute and not wait for government, but say, what contribution can I make to ensure that we have jobs for those that are unemployed, especially the youth. We must support our economic recovery. We did say that the struggle that uh, Edna Molewa waged of political freedom was an easy face. That the struggle for economic freedom is going to be more difficult. And it is in this context that she was also very passionate to ensure that uh, uh, the land question is resolved in her lifetime. What is also important is that the stimulus package that uh, the president discussed with the cabinet that she was a member of includes also the investment in our people. It includes making more resources available uh, to hire more nurses and doctors in our health system. It also includes investment in education to ensure that we skill our people to soldier on and indeed liberate our country from the economic inequality that uh, is becoming intractable. We must remember here, by working across political parties, if we have to contest, let us, let us contest. But once the contestation is over, let us work together as true patriots, like Edna Mulewa was, as true South Africans, not only for ourselves, but for the future generations. And we must also work across all sectors of society. We want to call on our uh, private sector to have faith in this country and to invest in this country so that we don't only depend on foreign investment. We must continue to build a caring and just world. Unless everyone has a, a meal, let us share every plate we have. I pass my condolences on behalf of uh, Tswane University of Technology, on behalf of um, government, to the family, to the SMU community, and to our nation. This life of Edna Edith Molewa is a life well lived. It's a fight for justice and equality well fought. It's a race well run. Let us allow her to rest in the bosoms of a creator whom she loved and she worked for. And she knew that she was given by him to us and she will eventually go back to. We limi leti ma ya a re tseng mogoma wa gae wa utlogetseng re tswele pele go rotloetsa sechaba sa reng ke a leboga Can you all rise as we are about to sing the national anthem
Gentlemen, you kindly requested to remain standing until the procession has left uh, the auditorium and also allow the family of Minister Mulewa to leave the auditorium before you do so. By the power vested in me, I hereby dissolve this assembly of the Safaku Mahatu Health Sciences University.